Team Baxter. So I'm at bag E. Bag E contains the shock dampers. You get it cut open and dump all the stuff out here. Springs. Metal balls. Some oil with no label on it. Uh, it actually looks a lot looser than 30. Um, and the shot. So I'm going to get all this stuff out, line it up, and then start to assemble. So the first step is to assemble the shafts. Uh, we have four shafts, about eight tiny little eclips and the eclips go around the shock shaft and kind of snap on there and then the piston sits right on top of that and then it gets bound in by another eclip eclip sits on top you take your needle nose and pop it down in um, after a little practice, you can pop those on pretty easy. Uh, those E-clips, they like to go springing across the room. It's a good idea to have extras of those on hand in your uh, hobby toolbox. But So I've got to do all four of those and then move on to the body assembly. I got the shafts done. And next comes the bodies. A um, bunch of these silicone O-rings. I don't know if they're silicone, but they're O-rings. Um, and they get seated into the bottom of these uh, shock bodies. So, a ton of parts in that bag. But, pull the shock bodies out. push the rest of this stuff aside right now. So you get two O-rings in the bottom of each shock body. Um, I used green slime uh, from Team Associated uh, to as a buffer between the layers um, just a little bit and then I pop some uh, pop the O-ring in and I do that between each uh, between between each ring. This is a little bit of grease, not not a whole lot, just enough to kind of get around there. First ring, getting a little low on my green slime here. So put a little bit on there and just move it around a little bit. I use green slime to kind of seal up the shock a little bit it's really thick grease so I'm probably sure you could use any sort of thick grease would do the same same deal the manual suggests that you oil oil the the rings but I use grease instead um, seem to have better results I don't it's just something I do so um, after I get that all in put the shot cap on and make sure you don't over tighten that or cross thread it being that it's all plastic just a just enough and I'm gonna get that done on the other four the other three shock shaft and pistons complete shock bodies with o-rings complete now I drop these shock shafts into the shock bodies. I'm gonna get it through that hole without banging up those O-rings too much. And there's my extra grease. And push those on the, all the way through. Then I'm gonna go ahead and um, slide on this 
little stopper. I generally end up taking these off. This what this does is stop the the shaft from compressing all the way. Sort of a bumper. Um, on other vehicles, I end up taking these off. But of course, I'm going to run it stock and see how it does. But after I put that on, get a a rod end, and that gets screwed on along with a. I extremely dislike rod ends. I'm gonna have to get my vices out and get these rod ends on. They get metal ball ends in that rod end. And um, go ahead and get that done on all four. The shafts are installed on the bodies and now it's time to fill the fill the bodies. The tops get a small o-ring. Little tiny little thing. Um, I'll also grease that as well. Up in that top right there and then I may use the included oil I may use my own oil this oil seems very loose so um maybe not but get those filled up to the top and then screw the top on get the retainer clips on and the springs so I've previously filled this shock halfway uh, pump the piston a couple of times to let the air come up and then I let it rest for about two or three minutes uh, just to let any air come up uh, now I'm gonna fill it just to the top and very slowly compress the spring all the piston all the way Got a paper towel handy because I'm going to have some oil leak out. But I run that shaft all the way to the bottom. You can see the, the piston up top. Wipe off the extra and then screw the top right down on that. I'm holding the bottom of the shot with my pinky finger. It's not really going anywhere, but at the last couple turns, it can kind of push back. Um, the reason I fill them this way is so that I can get full full movement out of the shock um, so there's no other way to kinda get that piston to run fully through the body I pull it back out real slowly to allow the oil to go through the piston and then I give it a twist a couple of times to make sure it's down at the bottom so that's how I fill them uh, may not be how everybody else fills them but that's how I do it now get the adjuster screw that on it's a plastic adjuster um, pretty loose not not the tightest adjuster there but um, right after that Get a small spring, which is knotted up in this bunch of four. Slide that on. A little separator goes in there. And that's nice, it kind of hangs on to that spring. Let's get that on there. Get this piston pulled all the way back out. Pull the long spring out, get that on, and while I'm holding the spring on, slide the retainer clip. It's 
So at the fully open position, the shock is moving a little bit. The spring is moving a little bit. So I'm going to back it down just a little bit so that the spring catches. And that's where I'll leave the fronts and the rears. I'll probably compress almost all the way. That adjust is really loose. I don't know if that'll stay in place very well, but we'll see. Anyway, I'll push the rears almost all the way down. It's got a good action on it. I don't like that that separator rubs on the springs, that, but that's typical with this sort of shock setup. Uh, but yeah, that's how the shocks go together. And get the other three completed and get them mounted on the truck. Shocks are done. Got a nice smooth action to them. I don't know how they'll perform once I get them on the truck, but I know that they look pretty good just now. Mm -hmm.